Hello, Oracles. Well, I happen to be looking at the charts today, and I noticed that Tesla stock is starting to consolidate. And so we will go over today some of the different catalysts that could cause us to either break out or break down. Now, when I say that we are consolidating, when you're looking at the charts, and I'm looking at the daily chart, when you're looking at the day chart, we are making lower highs and higher lows. Now, we had discussed in the past how we were kind of trading in a range between 620 and 770. Well, now that 620 bottom pushed up to 650 and then 695 and now 700. And the top has come down from 770 to 750 and now 720. So we're kind of trading in this tighter range and that's what we mean by consolidation. So basically the range that we are trading in has been pinched a little bit closer to each other. And so usually what happens is when that gets to the apex, you either break out or break down. And you don't have to get to the apex in order to break out or break down. It can happen anytime in between, but that's usually, you know, you can track out when it could happen potentially at the last moment. Now, other signs are indicating that we are heading towards this consolidation as well, where we've got the volume coming down on average. And yesterday was actually lower than normal volume with about 23 million shares trading hands. And then we have the RSI, which is pretty average and right in the middle around 51. So these numbers all in technical analysis are pointing to the consolidation and a potential breakout or breakdown. So the catalysts that we have coming up that can cause us to go one way or the other, and I'll let you guys decide at the end what you think it's going to do. First, we have earnings coming up on this Wednesday, July 20th. And so when it comes to the earnings, the questions we ask ourselves are, well, what are the expectations? Expectations for EPS are between 180 and 189. And then the question that you ask is, well, are is the stock market going to go based off of uh, expectations? Have the expectations actually worked in a lot of the information that we got about Shanghai being down because a lot of production and delivery expectations did not? Or is the market going to react more to uh, guidance that comes up in the future? Or are they going to be waiting for the annual shareholder meeting because that's coming up on the 4th of August where we might get actually further insight when it comes to the split, future production, any other future projects that they are working on. So this could go one way or the other. So for me, it's a 50-50 swing as far as the earnings go. So the next catalyst we are going to have after that is just all Q2 earnings that are coming in at the end of this month, because that in itself could drag the entire market down. When you've got a lot of stocks, then companies that are in the S&P all reporting earnings, if the S&P pulls down, that in turn could pull Tesla down as well. We have seen all year long that Tesla has been basically trading with the macro environment, you know, occasionally breaking out of the trend, but very quickly getting pulled back into what the macro environment is doing. So if Q2 earnings do come in bad and the market reacts negatively towards everyone else's Q2 earnings, could in turn bring Tesla down also. Next catalyst we are going to have is on July 26th and 27th is the next FOMC meeting where the Fed is going to be deciding as to whether they're going to be doing a 75 basis point hike or a 100 basis point hike, which the market has seemed to have priced in. So now I look at, well, we've been talking about how the Fed was going to come out and say different things to let us know kind of one way or the other what they were going to do. And one of the most hawkish feds, Fed Bullard, came out and said that he's anticipating within the next 18 months that we will come down to a 2% inflation, and he does not see a reason to go to a 100 basis point hike at this meeting. He sees a 75 basis point hike. So if one of the most hawkish feds comes out and says a 75 basis point hike, and the market has already priced in a 100 basis point hike, we might see a break out on this news if we get the 75. So again, this one can swing one way or the other, but it seems like the market may be pricing in a little bit different, but maybe the market wants a 100 basis point hike because they really want to get inflation down and they don't trust the Fed. So again, this one here, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. It all depends on how the market is going to feel when it comes to the rate hikes and what they have priced in and how much trust they have in the Fed. And now I've expressed my feelings on this before. I'm hoping for a 100 basis point hike because I just want the Fed to get in front of this and I think that they can quickly make a U-turn. So I'd prefer a 100 basis point hike. But again, we will find out in a couple of weeks what the Fed decides. And the next catalyst is going to be the GDP data, which we get on July 28th. This GDP data is the advanced reading, so we will get to know if we are actually in a recession or not. So a recession is two quarters in a row of negative GDP growth. Now, we also did just get retail numbers in on Friday, showing that we are up 1% in June. So is this enough to offset things and actually bring us into the positive for GDP? 
We shall see what happens on July 28th, but I think this is going to be another catalyst because if all of a sudden we're starting to see recession coming out in the headlines, we might see that breakdown happen. However, if we get the positive number, we could actually see a rally coming out of this and get a breakout instead. So then the next piece of information we're going to have after this is going to be the annual shareholder meeting on August 4th. So at this meeting, we are going to get the split vote to determine whether we actually are going to be splitting or not. We might actually get the split date if we do end up getting a vote for a yes. And then usually at the annual shareholder meeting, we get a lot of information as far as what's going on with the company, where are we at with production, where are we at with future products. It sounds like Holmars over on Twitter is saying that we are going to find out about everything. We've been hearing rumors about Dojo being up and running, so maybe we'll get some information on that. And then of course, AI Day 2, I'm sure we're going to get a full wealth of information when it comes to Dojo and all the other future products for Optimus and FSD and Robo Taxis. And the last catalyst I see that could potentially swing us one way or another is going to be the CPI data that we get on August 10th. This is the next inflation reading that we get when now we have seen oil prices and commodity prices coming down. So are we going to actually see a true steep inflection downward when it comes to inflation? So I think August 10th could swing us one way or another and be another catalyst that could cause us to break out or break down. Now, when it comes to inflation, Elon did tweet the other day stating that if inflation does come down, they might be able to pull down vehicle prices. So now we know that we don't want to pull down the vehicle prices too quickly because that actually, in doing so, might actually push off demand because people will say, well, I don't want to buy right now because if prices are going to come down, you know, I will push off my order. So perhaps Elon said this in an attempt to kind of push off some of the demand because right now we're really at a point where demand is so high they cannot keep up with it and that is a significant problem because you don't want to piss off people because they need to wait a year to get their car so maybe this is just him working on trying to toy with timing and delay some of the demand that is out there so that production ramp can catch up to the current demand that they have and when it comes to production and deliveries for tesla and their ability to catch up with demand I encourage you to follow a Tesla bot over on Twitter. I have his handle down in the description below, or you can follow him over on our Discord chat. That link is also down there. Uh, he puts out very accurate forecasts for the future of Tesla's uh, delivery and production. And that can give us an indication as to whether Tesla is going to be able to catch up to the demand anytime soon. And one thing we discussed on our live stream last night was the fact that Yes, a lot of legacy automotive makers are down significantly over the last couple of years when it comes to all the deliveries that they have made. But just remember, that doesn't mean that the demand went away. So demand for vehicles across the board has been significantly high because no one can produce any vehicles. So at this point coming out of this, it's going to be whoever can produce the most vehicles the fastest is going to win. I think we're going to see a very strong market next year when it comes to automotive manufacturing. And again, seeing as many people right now with the oil prices being as high as they are gas prices being as high as they are more and more people are going to want evs so it's going to come down to if a company can produce evs quickly enough they will scoop up a lot of this demand that would normally probably go for ice vehicles so that transition is happening right now but can tesla keep up with that production another piece of this breakout or breakdown puzzle comes from more of a sentiment feeling rather than an actual date and that is going to be the fact that a lot of people are anticipating the s p pulling down to 3400 so if this is getting factored in and we're anticipating the s p falling then any little negative catalyst could trigger that topple to happen However, seems like a lot of retail out there is not capitulating because it seems like they're feeling like, you know what? We don't want to give in because we're afraid that big money is just using this to manipulate us. And the moment we sell, big money is going to come in here and buy up all of our shares. And by the time we get back in, we're actually going to be buying in higher than what we sold it at. So this here could also be playing into whether we break out or break down. The next real piece of information that could swing us one way or another is what would potentially be, I think, the split at the end of August. But personally, because of all of the information and all of the stuff that is going on over the next couple of weeks, I have a feeling we are going to either break out or break down by the time we get to the annual shareholder meeting. Which way we're going to go? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, which way you think we are going to go, whether we break out or break down, and why do you think we are going to go that way? What catalyst do you think it is that's going to cause us to move? 
Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all of the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, I do have a Patreon. That link is also in the description. And I just today uploaded all of my income and investment statements, my future price targets between now and 2032, and all of my production estimate updates between now and 2024. And thank you to all of my patrons over there. And thank you all so much. Have a great one.